Hi everyone, welcome to Tea Time with Kim Tech. My name is Kim and Tea Time is where I'll share IT related stories or any non-technical but still IT related information with you all. Today I am drinking Earl Grey milk tea and our topic is going to be CISSP tips. What was helpful or not helpful and did having a security plus certificate helped make a difference and what I would have done differently studying for this exam. Go ahead and grab your choice of beverages or a snack and we shall get started. Let's go. As a disclaimer, all purchase items were with my own money. This is not a sponsored video and I cannot go into any specifics of the exam due to an NDA. Also, everyone has different ways of studying so my method may not work for you. Anyways, I'm going to go down the list of resources chronologically based on my journey. If you want to know about my CISSP journey, I'll include the video link in the description below. Also, all resources will be in the description box as well. Number one, bachelor degree. To be honest, I don't remember much from my study what I remember most were really from my work because they were hands-on. Number two, security plus certificate. I really didn't need this to pass. I remember nothing from this exam except that I passed the security plus by one point. Number three, Cybex, ISC Square Official Study Guide, 8th edition. It's a good read to provide you with the foundation. You don't need this particular book, but I do believe you need one and not more than that since the information does um, get confusing if you read too many books as I've seen conflicting info. Now there's the new ninth edition that came out the year that I took the exam, but the eighth edition was good enough for me. And I mean, I passed with it. Number four. FR Secure video on YouTube. It's a good summary audio of each domain, especially if you're driving, cooking, exercising, and etc. But sometimes things do go off topic. If you're not a reader, this may work better for you. But I don't think this alone can help you pass unless you already know everything and just need an audio review. Number five. Mind maps videos from Destination Certification on YouTube. They are great. They're short and sweet snippets of each domain that can be easily digested. This helps link topics together for me to see as a whole because it can be difficult to visualize how concepts interrelate. I redrew all the mind maps with side notes on the Sunflower Summary printouts. Number six, Sunflower Summary. This was actually just okay for me. I didn't really use this to study. I skimmed through this once or twice and that was it. I used it more to put my notes in the same place for each domain since I did print it, printed them out but on a 11 by 15 paper size. Number seven, both on practice exams. This is 99 US dollars for 700 questions. It's a simulation software which consists of four individual practice exams. The practice questions were more technical and some were pretty difficult. Still a good source of practice questions. Number eight, Cybex official practice test. This came as a bundle with the official study guide the practice questions are simple memorization. I see this as to help you remember the simple stuff to build your foundation of understanding. Number nine, Kelly Handerhan, why you will pass the SIG SSP. This helps put you in the right mindset. This is not so much of a technical exam, but there were a couple technical questions that I encountered. Number 10, Reddit subforum. This includes word of encouragements and live lessons that I took from the contributors. 
They're a great source of recommendations. Number eleventh. I'm out of fingers to count. The eleventh hour. No pun intended. The third edition. This was not helpful for me in any way. I felt like it was a waste of money. Number twelve. Kelly Handerhand Ten Minute Kerberos. This is very helpful to simplify how Kerberos work at a high level. Number thirteen, CISS Prep website. There are a lot of questions, but not all questions have an explanation, which sucks for us when trying to study and understanding the concept. I gave myself a thirty-minute limit to find the reason if the answer has no explanation. If I couldn't find out why, then I email CISS Prep. I was in contact with Seth. One of the admins, very often, when I emailed for help, I always shared what my train of thoughts were when picking my answer, so I could give Seth some background on why I chose what I chose. I think that was very helpful for Seth when helping me because he was able to guide me in the right directions. And let me know why I was wrong, or if the questions or answer were worded confusingly. It was an awesome experience working with Seth because I felt like I was helping to improve their practice questions, while they helped me understand the concept better. Number fourteen, study notes and theory. This website has awesome videos and practice questions. The videos were detailed with just enough information for you to be informative on the video topic. Like the CISS prep practice questions, I was also in frequent contact with Luke about questions that I didn't understand. However, what set study notes and theory different was that when I got a question wrong, it was because I didn't have enough knowledge. Not that the explanation was lacking or the questions were confusing. There's a fine difference because you need to have a foundation. I misunderstood some concepts, which led me down a different path in logic. And Luke was incredibly helpful in correcting me whenever I reached out. I will admit that his practice questions are a bit overwhelming. But they do get you thinking, which really help put everything in perspective and kind of put different topics together. Number fifteen, diagrammed processes daily before bed. This definitely helped me understand because it's similar to mind maps, but instead of domain, it's for certain processes, a bit more specific. So I could understand how they work and what can be affected. Depending where you are in the process, this is essential if you are a hands-on or visual learner. And since that's how I learn best, I need to put pen on paper, any trouble concepts or ideas to see the flow and really understand them. Some processes I drew out were incident response, life cycle, risk management. And business continuity. Number sixteen. Free questions from Adam Gordon on LinkedIn. These are great additional practice questions, and the best part is they are free. Besides those resources, there were three non-essentials, but definitely helped me with my study, and they were calm frequency music while studying and taking notes. It really helped me concentrate. I believe in nourishing your brain. With healthy food to help you function and think. I don't know about you, but I don't study well when I'm sluggish. So, a 30 to 45 minute stretch in the morning always get me ready for the day. If you ask me what really helped me pass, they were the official study guide, study notes and theory, CISS prep, and diagramming processes. Those four. Were what made me successful. Now for tips. What I recommend if you're studying for the CISSP are one is to pick one book, read through it more than once, unless you have graphical memory, 
then great for you, my friend. You have a head start. Two, mind maps. Watch them to get a holistic sense of each domain. Three, tell your hand, hand why you will pass the CISSP. This helps you get in the right mindset so you're not too deep in the weeds. Four, CISS prep. Lots of practice questions, but always ask questions when things don't make sense. Five, study notes and theory. Pay for them when you're three months away from the exam. That way, you already have the basics to go through the practice questions since they are a bit more difficult. The additional videos from the website are also great contents. Number six, if possible, don't rush it like I did with your this study. This is probably the one thing I would have done differently. But I wouldn't recommend taking more than one year with your study if you're dedicated because you might end up forgetting the material. Tip number seven, diagramming processes. If you're a visual learner like me, this would be very helpful to visualize the flow of the process and understand it completely. Finally, what I recommend when you're taking the test is to not assume. Read through the questions and answers and the questions again and make sure you pace yourself. Don't make the mistake I made on my first exam. I share a lot of things today. Feel free to rewatch the video if you couldn't catch them all the first time around. It's always encouraging to hear others' success story so you can keep moving forward with your stressful study. If you didn't pass the first time, try again. Evaluate what you did or didn't do and if you really understand the concepts. Try something different. I was being cheap in the beginning and didn't want to dish out some cash for additional practice questions, but I'm glad that I ended up paying for them the second time around. This cert means a lot to me because I put so much hard work into it for the short amount of time that I did with my study. I'm not the smartest or the quickest studier. I'm average really, but I don't give up if I want something. Anyways, I should end it here before I continue rambling on. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment below. I'll try my best to get back to you. As a reminder, I can't say anything specific about the exam itself due to an NDA. Hope you all find this video helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe. Thank you and have a nice day or night wherever you are, my buddies. Until next time, bye!